Hey YouTubers, this is Lonnie Clark again, that's for art. Um, this is kind of a second addendum to my first 20 minute rant that I just did. Uh, I just re-listened to it. I'm not going to delete it because there was a lot of things on there. That, I mean, everything on there I truly believe. Um, but there were some things that I left out. Some pretty big things that I left out. Uh, I On that video, I explained um, how Mike Pence's office falsely accused me of uh, murdering his staff, it, which is really slander. It got me put on a list. I'm being tracked. I know that now. Uh, and how intimidating that was. This is what I forgot to tell you. This is how effective the long arm of intimidation is. That happened in 2009. I had been actively engaged in speaking out since the Democrats refused to stand up when Bush stole the election and when they rubber stamped the Unpatriot Act and went along with the program and it was pretty obvious that our country was being dragged into the mud all of our freedoms we threw away Magna Carta we threw away you know we started torturing people not that we hadn't been doing that the CIA had actually been secretly doing this for years which wink wink nobody actually pretended we knew about but we did know about it uh, and that was when we really got hard. That's when a lot of the whistleblowers from the CIA came out. John Perkins wrote his book, Confessions of a, what was it? Confessions of an Economic Hitman. Uh, that's when we found out a lot of stuff, right? And I started getting actively engaged thinking that I'm going to be a patriot now and I'm going to like stand up for my country and started calling people. And what that did was get me investigated at a certain point by the GOP, by Mike Pence's office. And their intimidation worked. I honestly, I stood up to them. I wrote a big long letter complaining. I sent it to my two elected officials, um, to President Obama, to Mike Pence's office, who, by the way, never wrote me and apologized for that. Uh, I mean, I understand it wasn't him doing it. It was his staffers doing it. But his office never apologized for falsely accusing me of murdering their staff when I never did. That was slander. And they know that I'm too poor to actually sue the fuck out of them, which is what I wanted to do. But what it did do was it kept me quiet until guess when? May 5th. 2012, when I had a nightmare about Fukushima, I actually had a nightmare about Hanford, and I found out Fukushima was out of control. Then I heard, three or four months later, I heard Carl Grossman on the air with uh, Helen Caldecott talking about how we all need to do something, and I decided to take action. It has been a three-year journey of me speaking out. I, it took me a long time to get my courage up to talk about things on the YouTubes and start making my own videos. So I understand why people are hesitant and they're all sort of bashful and shy. But you know what? We don't do all. We need millions of people. The more videos, the better. And I actually think it's important for us to put our faces kind of, kind of, so for we can see each other. Uh, because we need faces. We don't need anonymity because that's what's really been at the heart of it. It's all socially engineered so that we're all afraid. But let's just face it, folks. Electronically, if you're watching this video, you are already tagged. Because we are considered, you know, alternatives. We're not going with the swallow the radiated water routine. You know, we're not eating fish, probably. None of us. Um but I did want to put that out, that the long arm of intimidation does work, and I do understand that people are intimidated. But I do encourage people to really love yourself and to really begin to understand that you are worthy of love, that we can stand up to the Mike Pence's of the world, to the Donald Trump's, the sexual predators, to the murderers, the, the ha ha ha, we came, we saw, we murdered Clinton machine, you know, uh, there is ways around it, and it's only going to happen if all of us stand up. Now, I am having, as I said, a Stand Up for the Planet protest on November 5th, and that comes from V for Vendetta, Remember, Remember, the 5th of November. It's the Guy Fox thing. It's why, if you have not watched that movie, V for Vendetta, please do, because... It talks about what happens in culture when everybody is afraid. And we really need... The system is collapsing on its own, folks. And they are counting on all of us staying silent as we quietly die. And I don't know about you, but I'm, I am not going to stay silent. And I love my children enough. And I love myself enough. And I love all of you enough 
to encourage you to speak out, to please protest on November 5th. Speak out, stand up for our planet. This Talk about heartbreak. You know what the heartbreak is? How many times have I made a video asking people to please come out in the streets, to please protest, to please speak out? How many videos have I made? How many videos has Kevin Blanche made? Kevin and I were did the Post Ignorance Project together for probably two years. He was around the country. Nobody ever fucking showed up when he did his protests. Maybe a handful of people, five, six, ten, fifteen. Maybe we had 30 people all together out of millions. I mean, he gets thousands of clicks on his videos. I probably get 50 or 60. <laughs> uh, you know. The heartbreak. There's life after heartbreak, folks. And our hearts can be mended. And our lives can be mended. And we can make things better. We're not just victims. We can lose the victim mentality. Victim mentality is um, kind of a cop-out, frankly. Uh, it re allows you to refuse to be a human being. You know, uh, I have known women who have stayed with their battered spouses. And it wasn't until their battering spouses, put it that way, that were stayed. And I've known women who actually beat their spouses up, which is men should never stay in that either. Nobody gets to hit anybody. That's the rule of life, you know? Like, can't we just do this? Peace on earth. Can you see that? Peace on earth. I think we can do peace on earth. We don't have to wait for the uh, apocalypse of war to create peace. We can create peace beforehand. So on November 5th, let's say at 3 o'clock, I'm going to stand outside the new federal building in Eugene, and I'm going to start chanting at 3 o'clock for an hour. I'm going to chant, peace on earth. Peace on earth. I'm going to come up with some kind of a chant for peace. And we're just, you know, I'm not going to do like Om Nami Rengeko, like that whole Buddhist temple thing. I'm going to create something in English because that's my mother tongue. And I'm going to, we're going to chant and pray for peace and pray that we can save ourselves from utter sheer destruction. Because that is where we're headed. And this is not an election, folks. It's a selection. And people are angry. Why? Because they want to pretend like Trump and Clinton are real candidates. No, they're not real candidates. They're real front men. They're well-paid servants. They're doing exactly what they're being told to do. And they're not spilling the beans on who's given them orders. The heartbreak. There's life after heartbreak. I'm living proof. <laughs> and you know what happens when you get over being heartbroken? This is always what happens. This is called life. Something else happens and you get your heart broken again. Um, if you love, you're going to be heartbroken. If you stay open, your heart will be broken. Every time your heart gets broken, you can mend it up. You get stronger. We become stronger human beings. We learn. We learn that it's okay and it's safe to love. It's all right to love. And it's okay to love ourselves. That's the big thing is we need to learn to really, really embrace ourselves and love ourselves. And we don't need hyperbolic information because the facts is already pretty devastating. And history is written by the victors. So whatever we hear about his story is always written by the people who write the books, right? So we know this for a fact, right? Bill Clinton uh, and George Bush, what did they do? They took the word nigger out of Uncle Tom's cabin for any books that are sold to schools. Because that's politically incorrect. And we're told that Bush Sr. was a great leader when that is 
completely incorrect. He's a monster, and I'm waiting for him to croak. Same thing with Henry, Henry Kissinger. I'm actually beginning to think those people are like uh, aliens, like they're just or clones or something, man. They're friggin' pickled. They ought to be dead long ago. So I don't get it, but I do know that we are stronger than they are. There's millions of us. So I'm going to refuse to stay heartbroken, Tom. I guess that's the message. I am not going to be heartbroken. Yeah, heartbroken, but I'm going to grow and I'm going to learn and I'm going to love and I'm going to open myself up again to more love. And I guarantee you, when people start walking in love and hanging on, we hold each other's hands. When we touch each other, when we hang on to each other and refuse to let go, we can save ourselves. We can save our planet. We can save humanity in the spirit and the love that we have in our hearts. That's the most important thing on the planet. Love is greater than fear. Period. So let's walk in love. Let's be peace on earth. Let's challenge the scientists to not lie. What does that sign say? St. Louis Flint. Our kids are being hurt. That's actually all over America, folks. Our kids are being hurt. It is up to us to be adults and not buy into the false narrative. And to love each other despite the false narrative. Life after heartbreak is love. <laughs> Ciao, you guys. Love each other. Put your courage feet on. Bye.